there's the problem. The whole TXV fell apart. It actually landed on my pants. I thought it was a piece of hot solder. But yeah, it's busted inside internally. That valve is bad. We're still changing the other one too, but wow. I never had that happen before. The whole thing fell apart. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We are back today. We got approval to fix everything. So, uh, TXV is in this one. Cleaning and hoses and both, and then cleaning and a switch in this one. Um, we're gonna get in here and start recovering the gas. We got two recovery points. It's gonna take a little while because these things, they have so many different places for the refrigerant to get stuck. Uh, also disassembling, saving the insulation, pulling the sensing bulbs off. We'll slowly start pulling everything apart and then we're gonna fix what insulation is bad too. Okay, so leave this one loose. Open this guy up. Let it purge. And then tighten it on. There we go. This guy's in a vacuum already, so now we open the tank and uh, zero out the scale. And then we know we're purged all the way through the tank. So this is on here. Here's our scale. We need to change it to pounds and ounces. Everything's good here. I turned off power at the switch. I actually had the breaker. And then we'll throw a, a solenoid magnet on that liquid line solenoid here in a minute. Okay, so we're good there. We're ready to recover. All we need to do is open this guy up. Let it push in what it can. And then we'll start it up. Got solenoid magnets on both solenoid coils or solenoid valves. That way we make the process go faster. And we're kicking butt. We're at four pounds right now. But again, it's gonna it's gonna all get stuck in that receiver here in a few minutes as usual. We'll just start disassembling the insulation and everything nice and slow. All right, I have got the system recovered, uh, open to atmosphere, and we're purging with nitrogen. Solenoid magnet on the liquid line solenoid valve. I need to put it back onto that guy up there. We're going to uh, cut the components out as best as possible and then unsweat the little stubs. And then for the dryer, we're gonna unsweat it from here and unsweat it from the top of the receiver and pull the whole assembly out and sweat the dryer in outside because you got another machine here, not very much room over there. It's really hard to get in there without burning everything up to change that dryer. So nice little process, really tricky, but we've got the dryer installed. We just need to make our connections and then braze it back in and then we'll get on with the TXVs. Pain in the butt. There's the problem. The whole TXV fell apart. It actually landed on my pants. I thought it was a piece of hot solder. But yeah, it's busted inside internally. That valve is bad. We're still changing the other one too, but wow. I never had that happen before. The whole thing fell apart. Got some uh, Viper wet rag, heat blocking compound protecting those looks like I need to short up just a little bit on the bottom but uh, we're gonna get those uh, sensing bulbs bent out of the way and sweat those valves in real quick and get the evacuation started because I'm hungry for lunch
think I'm running out of oxygen. Nice, good looking, not overheated valves. Nice and pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and get the vacuum rib started up and I'm gonna take a lunch. All right, we've got the multi-hose setup going with the vacuum pump, core removal tools, micron gauge. Now, normally you have to do a multi-point recovery and evacuation, but because I have the solenoid magnets on, we are pulling through the entire system. So we're gonna let this go for a while and I'm gonna take a lunch and uh, hopefully it'll be done when I get back. Okay, we are putting refrigerant back into the system and I wanna show you something. The pressures are rising on the low side very slowly, okay? And this just proves the point that valves are never 100% leak free. You cannot pump these machines down, you cannot use these solenoid valves as a pump down method, okay? Because we are leaking through and, and, and it just happens. It could be something slightly in the compressor, who knows, but we're just uh, putting the initial charge and then we're gonna start insulating everything and putting it all back together. I'm gonna hit up all my joints real quick, make sure we don't get any leaks. No picking up traces or anything. I always double check my braze joints. I do a visual with the uh, mirror flashlight and then also check them. We're looking good. Back down in here on the dryer. Nothing, nothing. Okay, we're looking good. We're gonna go ahead and start taping everything up. Uh, it took the full pound, nine pounds, four ounces, or the full charge. All right, did my best. It's not perfect. Insulated this stuff as good as possible. Sensing bulbs, tried to use the old jacket. I'll have to get some insulation around this guy. Everything's plugged back in. Um, went ahead and replaced these vinyl hoses right here. We're still gonna clean this machine. I went ahead and changed the cube guide. We're gonna pull that mechanical bin switch out. Here's the old uh, tubes, pretty nasty. Um, okay, so we're gonna start this guy up, make sure it works, and then we'll disassemble it and clean it. All right, the machine is started up. This valve right here is feeding hot gas into both of these lines. They're both really hot. I gotta insulate that a little bit better. Um, okay, we're gonna start it again because that was a really short harvest cycle, but also the machine is really warm, so that might be why. So, but yeah, we're up and running, looking good so far. We're gonna watch the unit cycle, and then uh, we'll uh, see what happens. Well, I haven't looked at the book, but that is massively better than what it was last time at the five minute mark. Um, frosty evaporator, it's not flooding back to the compressor. We're looking good. I'm starting to put the top on, and then, uh, like I said, we'll watch this guy make ice, and then we're over here cleaning this machine right now, so. All right, we just finished the uh, harvest cycle and uh, had a nice good batch, made ice, a total cycle in about 26 minutes, which is pretty darn good. Again, we're not flooding back to the compressor anymore. The compressor is nice and warm like it should be, just cold right here at the suction inlet. So we're looking good. We're gonna go ahead and tear this guy apart and do a cleaning on it now. So uh, since we already ran cleaner through it last time, the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and shut down the machine and tear the whole thing down. We're gonna go ahead and do tear down, soak all the parts, drain all the water, and then we'll put it back together, run cleaner through it again, and you know, all that good stuff. All right, disassembling everything, and I'll show you what we do is we bring this over here, we bring a bucket, fill it with ice machine cleaner, and then set the parts in there to soak while we're doing everything, and then we take them apart and scrub them, so. All right, you really gotta watch out because this rubber O-ring is coming loose, so you cannot submerge this in water. 
you submerse it when the o-ring's coming out then water's going to get in there and mess with the sensor so we're just going to have to do a very gentle job of cleaning this sometimes these things that are supposed to be submersible aren't so you really got to watch that kind of stuff um i've got pure cleaner in that guy and every once in a while you just spray everything down and then we'll give it a rinse same thing in here we're just spraying it down letting it work on some of the calcium and then we'll clean it with a cloth uh we're um you can use like a soft bristle brush like that or a uh, scotch bright pad is last resort you really don't want to have to use scotch bright or anything sharp if you don't have to but sometimes you got to do it because they don't do normal maintenance so we're getting there um got up top sprayed everything down we're still going to run cleaner through it there's still a couple little spots but they're never going to become completely perfect so we've got pure concert or pure uh, cleaner sitting on there right now I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys back in real quick, snap them all back in. Those are gonna be a chore. And then after that, we'll run some more cleaner through it. All right, the machine about as clean as it's gonna get, it's not gonna get too much better than that. So what I did was I turned on the pump just to make sure everything was put where it was supposed to be, and it is. So we're gonna do one last final rinse with ice machine cleaner. I know what manuf manufacturer's instructions say, but trust me guys, this takes a lot more cleaner than what they say it takes. So typically on an ice machine cleaning, I do half to three quarters of a bottle for this size machine. And I use maybe a quarter of the bottle on the first rinse, a quarter of the bottle, maybe half the bottle on soaking in the bucket, and then the rest typically on the cleaning. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run with ice machine cleaner in there, get any more final scale off, and then we'll run a sanitizer solution. We're already running that final one on this one too. It looks like we need to maybe do a rinse because we got some leftover cleaner up there, but it's gotten the calcium off. So another thing I need to point out is this is the cleaning valve. What this does, this is your water inlet right here. Um, this allows the water pump to feed up through the water inlet and go through the fresh water inlet too. So that way you can get cleaner going. So we turned it on and right now it's only feeding through the top. But when I turn this valve, it starts feeding through here. So you always want to do that. Now there's a micro switch in there and it won't allow the machine to turn on in the ice mode when this is off in this position. So make sure you always set that right. So we're going to let this circulate for a minute and then we'll do a rinse and then a sanitize. It's looking much better in here. Again, it's never going to be completely perfect. There's always going to be a little calcium and stuff. It is what it is, but it's looking really good. And we're also dumping the ice right now too. We're burning it with hot water, but you gotta be careful because the bin drain isn't big enough to let it, uh, it'll start overflowing out the front. But yeah, we're just killing all that ice that was left over in there right now. So, machines are put back together. Bin is completely empty. We're waiting for uh, each machine to make ice. Um, we're gonna change this float boot because it's starting to be deformed. We've got a new one right here. I changed this one last time, so we're good. But yeah, machines have been sanitized and everything's good. This one's already kicking butt. We filled this one with the good ice and it's already almost full because before we started working on this machine, we transferred as much ice to this one so they would have ice. So this guy's satisfied. You can see that lid's all jacked up, but yep, they're running good. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one done. All right, after the fact I had written down, this was my uh, pressures. We were running 48 back and 245 head. Um, compared to what it was the first time, 73 back and 216 head. Uh, pretty close to the factory recommendations. Some numbers are a little bit skewed, but my outdoor ambient was also a little bit lower. Um, I'm not too worried about it. The machine is operating. And you can see I never rechecked the right machine because it had been operating properly since I left the last time. But the very peculiar thing was this expansion valve, okay? So what was happening was originally I was going to cut this out, but I decided to go ahead and unsweat it. So when I unsweat it, I had the valve maybe by like right here. And when I unsweat the last part and I pulled it out, something fell and hit me on the leg and, and it felt hot. And I thought maybe a piece of hot solder hit my pants or something. And then I looked down and I realized that there was the pins from the expansion valve, the superheat spring, the seat, and then this is the retainer. This is also your superheat adjustment too. These valves aren't field adjustable, but um, this piece right here had come loose. It's just a threaded piece with an Allen on it. And it had actually come loose inside. And that was the reason why we had the flooding expansion valve. Okay. Now, Hoshizaki themselves recommend you changing both. So it's just good practice when you're in there because it's just difficult. So just change them both since you're going to have everything out.
And that's what I did. And the other one, I went ahead and took it apart um, just to see. And I mean, the other one was fine. The other one was intact. Nothing was loose. Nothing was falling apart. But I've never seen that before. The actual retaining threaded piece right here had come loose and the whole assembly had just fallen apart in my hand. So this thing essentially wasn't even really being a valve and it was just letting refrigerant pass through it. Um, of course, I went ahead and put a new Sporlin catch-all filter dryer in there. Now this is actually an OEM catch-all from uh, Hoshizaki, but I went back in with the OEM valve and again, it's just the Sporlin catch-all. The What makes this one OEM is just the line sizes. Uh, one, they're, they're just funky. One size is smaller than the other size but it's essentially just an O32 uh, catch-all filter dryer. So that's cool. And here's the other valve, but yeah, everything was good. Um, I actually went back there today. It's been like three or four days since I was there. I was back there today just to follow up, check on them and re-insulate something on the right machine. Cause I never ended up having enough insulation to do the right side. So I checked on them. Everything was operating. All the ice machines were good. So, so that was a trip. I've never seen a valve fall apart when I was taking it apart. Or you're taking it out, you know, that was kind of interesting. And again, like I said in the thing, I thought, I thought something, you know, piece of hot metal fell in my pants or something. That was a trip. But anyways, um, you know, you're surprised all the time when you do this stuff, you just got to kind of have an open mind and trust your diagnoses. Um, you know, when you're, when you're going through this stuff, cause there was like a second where I second guessed myself, you know, was it actually a bad expansion valve? Did I have a leaking hot gas valve? You know, what was it? But no, I, I knew it was a valve and I, you know, I went through in my head over and over again. And yeah, that really, really told me that's what it was when I took it apart. You know, that was a trip. I've never seen that before, but, um, you know, going through these machines, understanding the sequence of operation is a lot. It really means a lot to know how the machines operate and to know what to look for. I'm sure that, you know, there was steps that I skipped and different things like that that you may have seen in my diagnosis in the original video. Again, obviously, this is the second part to a video from about two weeks ago. But um, I was confident that was what was going on with the machine, okay? So went ahead and came back out, recovered the gas, everything was good. Now, uh, as far as the cleaning goes, why didn't I clean it before? Why did I clean it after the fact? Is because I wanted to get the machine running, make sure everything was good before I spent a bunch of time cleaning it, making sure we didn't have to do you know a bunch of other stuff to the machine before we tore the thing apart. Now, I was uh, fortunate enough to have someone else with me, so that way he was cleaning majority of the time while I was working on this machine, and then I helped him with the middle machine once we got done with that. Uh, these machines can be a pain to clean. Um, I kind of wanted to address the ice machine cleaning cleaner thing that I kind of talked about a little bit in here. You know, the manufacturers, in my opinion, they specify certain amounts of ice machine cleaner uh, for certain reasons. Okay. Number one, of course, they want to advertise that their machines are the easiest and the fastest and whatever to clean. Okay. Um, I always, when I'm at the manufacturer's training, I always like to get them to admit to everybody inside the training, just that way that, you know, the 30 people that are there can hear the fact too, that deep cleanings are not what the manufacturer shows in their books, okay? Um, basically, they tell you in the book, you know, just pour cleaner in the machine, let it circulate, turn the cleaning valve, the water bypass valve, let it run, flush the water out, run sanitizer and call it a day, okay? A deep cleaning on these things is when you tear down the machine, take all the parts, soak them in, uh, you know, the ice machine cleaner, let them sit there, clean them off, go through everything, okay? Manufacturers also only recommend that you use a towel to wipe down the machine and never use abrasive cloths or brushes or anything like that. Well, they tell you soft bristle brushes are okay. But, you know, in the reality is, is sometimes the customers, they don't maintain these machines enough. So you have to get in there and scrap or scrape things. It is horrible to scrape, to use scrapers and screwdrivers and different things like that on these machines. And the reason why it's not good is because when you scratch the plastic, even though you think you're just scratching the surface, you're actually leaving gouges inside the plastic for bacteria and different things like that to grow in and new calcium to build up and in different things like that. So every time you get a machine nice and shiny clean, uh, the next time is probably going to be dirtier because that stuff is really going to get it embedded inside there. Another thing you have to be careful about is a lot of these new ice machine manufacturers, different ones have different things, but they build bacterial fighting chemicals basically into the plastics and if you scrape them down then you take those bacterial fighting chemicals out like for instance i think isomatic uses something called agion um 
different ones okay so they have and and i think manitowoc does something too in their plastics where it's like antibacterial plastic or something like that but you know the more you scrape it the more you give uh you know the surfaces little areas um the more you give the bacteria little areas for you know to get stuck in the surfaces of it so of course understanding how and what you're supposed to do to clean these is is proper and then also understanding that sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get the machine clean okay um you know in a perfect world they did a maintenance on this machine every month there wouldn't be calcium buildup okay um but you no know, there's no restaurant out there that i've ever been to that does that kind of pm work okay i used to do work for a hospital customer and they were crazy about their pms but even then they had calcium built up on different things like that okay so um but always understanding the sequence of operation that's truly important with these machines as far as how much cleaner that i used of course, I want you to follow the cleaning uh, manufacturer's instructions. You don't ever want to put chemicals, toxic chemicals in these machines that could make people sick, okay? Um, I go above and beyond to flush these machines out from what the manufacturer actually recommends. And as far as the amount of ice machine cleaner that I used in the machine, um, when I say I use three quarters to a whole bottle per machine, it's because I mean I'm using you know a quarter to a third of the bottle in the machine to circulate then I'm using a couple parts of the bottle basically in pans to soak parts in and then in my big bucket to soak parts in. Another thing to remember too, and I'm, I don't know these numbers exactly off the top of my head, but I want to say that ice machine cleaner like uses or loses its effectiveness after like 15 to 20 minutes of sitting. So, you know, pouring it into a big Lexan pan like I did and letting it sit for an hour really doesn't do anything because after like the first 15 to 20 minutes, like the, the acidity or the pH or some weird stuff like goes away and it really essentially just becomes, you know, a chemical inside a bucket and you're just soaking the parts really, okay? And that's a good thing too sometimes, but just keep that in mind, okay? Letting ice machine cleaner sit and manipulating the machine to run for hours on end with just a circulation pump really isn't going to do much when the cleaner loses its effectiveness after so much time. And I believe that applies to like most cleaners, whether they be citric acid based or phosphoric acid based. Um, I, those are the two main cleaners. Hoshizaki has their own brand, but uh, scale away, I think is what they call it. But um, everyone uses some sort of an acidic base that, uh, that to my understanding, that, that circulates through the machines and cleans them, okay? Um, whenever possible, I really dig using the uh, Refrigeration Technologies ice machine cleaner or the Viper ice machine cleaner. Uh, I actually didn't have any with me on this job, but I do need to get some more because that stuff is very, very um, effective. It does a really good job of cleaning these machines. Um, but that's a whole nother thing. So, hey, I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end and listening to my endless rambling like usual, okay? Do me a favor, guys. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Give me some comments inside there. Help YouTube to recognize that you guys are watching these videos. I've been noticing, um, I think I've said this a few times too, as far as subscribers versus uh, non-subscribers. We actually have more non-subscribers watching these videos than subscribers. And I realize there's margin for error there with people not logging into their browser, but still, that's a pretty significant number. I want to say when I looked yesterday, it was like 60% of the people that watch these are not subscribed. So please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. Um, feel free to send me an email if you guys have any questions or comments, any feedback for me, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. And uh, as usual, if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, the easiest way to do so is to watch the videos all the way to the end. You guys are doing that already. Thank you. Uh, you guys can also purchase merch. I have merch available. This is my flag shirt right here. I actually always forget. Um, has a pretty cool design on the back too. Check out my website, hvacrvideos.com, and you'll see all the different merch that I have available, hats, beanies, the flag shirt, the big picture diagnosis shirt, and then a zip up hoodie. Um, that's another way you guys can support the channel if you're interested. Uh, remember, if you guys are going to order as like Christmas gifts or anything like that, or if you want it before Christmas, you need to get on that because uh, something like basically i think you need to order it within the next week or something like that because we just ship regular ground so you want to give it plenty of time to get to you guys if you're using it as a christmas gift of some sort but then again why would you use it as a christmas gift because more than likely you're not buying it for your spouse or your kids so that was kind of useless information that i put out there but anyways hey there goes that rambling again um, also, if you guys are interested in purchasing any tools, check out truetechtools.com. I have an offer code that'll save you 8% on your order. Big picture, one word. And uh, if you know what you're going to get, shoot me an email and I'll generate an affiliate link for you that helps me out a little bit more. Um, I have talked enough. Thank you guys very much. We will catch you on the next one.